Yo, what up, everybody? Today we're coming at you with a video about the types of forces. And we're going to be talking about these types of forces, gravity, normal tension, friction, applied, and spring. These are not the only type of forces in the universe. However, these uh, six forces can describe most of the motion that we see around us. And they are the forces that are usually talked about in a beginning physics course. So first of all, uh, let's just kind of think about what forces are around us. Anything that's on the ground, like this cow is laying on the ground, why is the cow not floating on the air? What is causing it to stay on the ground? As you may have guessed, the answer is gravity. And gravity is a force that pulls one mass towards another mass. Now, while all masses are attracted to all other masses because of gravity, the attraction is very weak unless one of the masses is very, very large. Right, and so for us on Earth, the object that's really large that we're close to is the Earth itself. And because the Earth has so much mass, it pulls down on things with a noticeable force. Right? Whereas the other forces, like the force between me and the chair or me and my car, are, are too small to be, to be felt or, or to change the motion of things. But the uh, force of gravity of the Earth has on, th on anything with mass around it is a noticeable force, and that force pulls things straight downward. So for any situation, unless there is, um, unless it specifically states that it's often, way off in space somewhere, uh, we expect there's going to be a force of gravity that's pulling the object straight down towards the center of the Earth. So you might ask the question, what if the cow is on a hill? Is the force of gravity straight, still straight down? And the answer is yes. Okay, you can see that when uh, something, if the surface is tilted, the force of gravity is not straight into the hill, the force of gravity is straight down. So we know why the cow stays on the ground, but why doesn't the cow sink through the ground? All right, it's because there's another force, and that's a normal force. So while the cow's being pulled down into the earth, the earth doesn't just give way and let the cow through. Rather, the surface of the earth pushes up on the cow. In this case, it pushes up with the same force. Now, will the normal force always be in this direction? Will it always be straight up? So what direction should we expect to find the normal force? Take a look at this man right here. He has a box resting on his head and his hands. Can you imagine which direction the surface of that box is pushing on him? Well, first, let's look at the surface of the box. It's right there. It's flat. The normal force from the box is pushing straight down on him. You can imagine, if you put yourself in his shoes, that the box is uh, kind of pushing down on his head and pushing down on his hands. Uh, take another example. This box is on a steep hill. The surface of that hill is right here. You see that black line? The force that the hill is using on the box, the box is not sinking into the hill because the hill is pushing it that way. All right, so you can see that in both of these cases, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface that is causing the normal force. Whereas the box is pushing down on the man, the force that the man feels is perpendicular to the surface of the box. The hill is pushing up on the box, to, it's pushing up and to the left to prevent the box from sinking in. That normal force is perpendicular to the surface of the hill. All right, so the normal force is the force from a solid surface that prevents another object from moving through it. Basically, solid things don't just move apart and let things go through. Uh, the normal force is always going to be perpendicular to the surface causing it. So it can be in any direction, up, down, left, right. It depends on the surface that's causing it. So the normal force pushes straight up on the cow because the surface of the earth at this point is flat and the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. If the cow were to be on an incline, the normal force would not be flat. Instead, it would be perpendicular to the surface, which means it would tilt as well. Tension is another force that's common in the world. So there's two people playing tug-of-war. They both feel a force from this rope. 
The person on the left feels a force pulling him to the right. The person on the right feels a force pulling him to the left. And that comes from tension. Tension is a force caused by the tightness in a rope chain or, or something, anything that's being used to pull another thing. And the tension is always directed towards the center of the thing that's getting tight. So in this case, the rope is getting tight. And when it does, the rope would like to go back to its equilibrium position. It causes the person on the left uh, to be pulled this way because the rope on the left side wants to move back this way and the rope on the right side wants to move back this way. So it's always directed towards the center of the rope. Here's an example. A box is hung from a ceiling. What forces are on the box? We know that gravity, as all things on Earth, are pulled towards the center of the Earth by gravity. But what's holding the box up? There's no surface this time like there was with the cow. Well, tension force. Both ropes are being stretched out by this box. And so both ropes would like to go back to their equilibrium position. They don't want to be stretched out this much, so they resist by pulling up on, on the bottom of the rope. Right, and because there's two ropes, uh, in order to balance the gravity, both of these ropes hold half of the, the force of gravity. And so that's why these arrows are smaller than the force of gravity arrow down here. Now look at this picture. Someone's pushing down on the spring. What force do, does their hand feel? And what direction is that force? If you've ever done this, you probably recognize that that force is going to be up. Right? A spring force is a force that's caused by a compressed or stretched spring or any other elastic object. It could also be rubber bands, uh, blocks of rubber like tires and things like that have a spring force. The spring force is always also directed in, a dir in the direction that would cause the elastic object to regain its equilibrium uh, shape. And so the direction, that will dictate the direction of the spring force. So take a look at both of these examples. On the left, the block is resting on top of a spring. And on the right, the block is hanging from a spring. Force of gravity is going to pull this box down, which will cause the spring to get pushed down. The spring will fight back right, until they reach equilibrium, in which case the force of gravity would be equal to the spring force. Then on this example here, on the roof, gravity is pulling the box down. This is going to stretch the spring out. The spring would like to go back to its resting position. And so it resists that change by pulling, pulling up on the box. Right? So sometimes if the spring is, is stretched out, the force is going to be uh, towards a direction that would cause it to uh, be compressed again. Whereas if the spring is compressed, the force is going to be in the direction for it to stretch out and find its resting position again. Now look at this example for our um, other two forces that we haven't talked about yet. A man is causing this box to move. So obviously he's exerting a force in the box. What type of force is this? Well, we would call this an applied force. An applied force is used for an intentional push or pull. So like if you, you push something, you open a door, um, you kick something. When one object purposely goes and uh, exerts a force on another, we call this an applied force. All right, so he gives the box a push with his applied force and he lets it slide. You notice the box eventually comes to a stop. So what force caused it to do that? What force caused it to slow down? And that would be the friction force. And friction is a force that opposes motion. All right, so what would be the direction of the friction force in this case? Well, the box was moving to the right. Something caused it to stop. So something had to be moving, pushing on it in the opposite direction, to the left. So in these examples, I'll show you the arrow uh, in the direction of the friction force. He pushes the box to the right you'll see that the friction force is to the left. This meteor falls down. The air molecules cause a friction force that is opposite the motion of the asteroid. 
right? Or, and you can see it's exactly the opposite. This, this um, box is being pushed up a hill. The friction between the surface of the box and the hill is pointed down the hill. And this guy pushes the box to the left this time. The friction is to the right. So no matter which direction an object is moving, the force of friction is going to be exactly opposite, 180 degrees uh, from the direction of motion. All right, so let's uh, tie this together with one final example. A person is pushing a box at a constant velocity. Uh, draw all the forces that act on the box. So you can pause the video and see if you can figure that out. Okay, well, he, there's an applied force, and he's pushing it to the right. We know that. We also know that gravity is still pulling this box down towards the center of the Earth. But this box doesn't sink through the ground, and so there must be a normal force from the floor pushing it up. It says that he's pushing it at a constant velocity, which means it's not speeding up, which means there must be another force because here you have an applied force on the right side, you have no force on the left. That would cause the box to speed up. If the box is not speeding up, it's because there's a force of friction that's equal to the applied force. All right, so that's an introduction to the six major forces that we look at when we uh, observe the motion of things around us. Again, there's more forces in the universe to learn about in future videos, and I hope to see you there.